Nothing says lifestyle like a glass of fine wine. And nowhere is Asia's growing thirst for it highlighted better than at the Hong Kong International Wine and Spirits Fair. It is the venue for the largest pan-Asian competition where judges choose wines and spirits most suited to regional cuisine. What particularly happened this year is we received a surprising amount of entries for food and wine matching. The fact that we have pan-Asian judges making selections for Asian dishes has really resonated around the world. Bigger challenge, more entries, of course, always go hand in hand, but in a loveliest way. I mean, our wine and food pairing aspect of the competition has increased by 300%. There are wines from all over the world wanting to get a feel and opinion from Asian judges if their wines work with Asian dishes or not. And it's absolutely fantastic. That's why when awards were handed out for best varieties of reds and whites, some of the most coveted honors were for best wines with Kung Pao Chicken, Dim Sum, Peking Duck, and new this year, Sashimi. So this is a Japanese winery. What a surprise, it went best with the sushi, Koshu Grey. The best wine to pair with sashimi really needs to respect the purity, the freshness, and especially the textural component of sashimi. And it is, uh, you know, some of the finest wines in the world with its wonderful underlying minerality. That would do the job. The third edition of the Wine Fair has attracted a record 700 exhibitors from 30 countries and regions. There are twice as many exhibitors from such places as France, Italy, and Spain, old world producing nations now actively engaging the Asia market. New world wines are also here in force, including those from the fair's partner country, Australia. It means that Australian wine is coming of age. We did very, very well in continental Europe and did well in America, where you have a huge number of those guys, but now it's going up into this Asian room, and Asia is for us where we feel as Australia as a country we can really accommodate you. We're not too far away, we understand each other, you're our biggest trading partners, and indeed wine is starting to be part of your culture, so we in turn really want to be part of that. The label from South Australia is engaging Asia with its own story dating back to the late 19th century, when they won a pair of international awards. More than a century later, that's been repeated as the company picks up prizes from London's IWSC, which helped organize this week's Asia contest. For them, Hong Kong is a high priority. We as a company, and this is our very first show ever to come to Hong Kong, usually we go with our agents, feel that this is important. It is very, very important. And particularly for somebody like Shadow Tananda, we want to get the new emerging trend of people. We want to spend time. We want to show them the very best of what we have. With Hong Kong's prospects as a regional wine hub looking ever more intoxicating, importers like this one at the fair say they're scrambling to keep up with demand. In the first nine months of 2010 alone, imports to Hong Kong were up a staggering 72% to more than a half billion U.S. dollars. Hong Kong began to uncork new business in 2008 when duties on beer and wine were scrapped. Since then, it's become second only to New York when it comes to wine auctions. The boom stems from the nearby Chinese mainland, which is growing fast as an export market. And one new vineyard on mainland soil is very much a Hong Kong family business. First one is a Tatra Reserve uh, Chardonnay. Uh, it's a wine named after my daughter. She was born in 2003, so the wine was launched in 2003. Deep Blue is a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot and Cab Franc, and it's the uh, first Chinese wine being listed in a cafe first and business class. And finally is our top flagship wine, is uh, Chairman Reserve. It's actually my dad's uh, wine, he, he, he stamped on it. The reason why we have a lot of family element in it, because in most of the winery in China probably are state owned, we wanted to show people that we are the families behind the wine. My daughter, my dad, and myself. The wine is more personal, it's a lot of taste about what you like, so that's what we are trying to do. The industry just exposed. I think uh, at first, and in, in, initially, wine wasn't that popular, which is a drink. Now people become interested in it. They wanted to know more about it, ask questions. For example, with our retail wine shops, clients used to come in and say, I not want the most expensive wine. Now they would ask, can I have the Cabernet Sauvignon? They would say that, I think this vintage is better than that vintage. They are actually, the knowledge is picking up very fast. The industry itself is keeping pace with that growing consumer sophistication, as reflected by the range of support services and equipment and intense seminars on market trends and strategies here at the fair.
If you consider yourself the major important player, you have to be in Hong Kong. You cannot tell people that I'm a very famous brand, I'm a quality wine, and you don't exist in Hong Kong. So that's why I think for me, Hong Kong become more and more important, even though it may not be the biggest market.